From the config menu, select I.O. Configuration Wizard to choose the type of configuration. In this case, we choose an IIR setup with an automatic routing complete with all the analysis tools. Then we activate all the check marks for the high level signal analysis received from the OEM source. Master delay and polarity check that verifies the presence of time delays and inversions of electrical polarity of the speakers. Master DEQ and phase alignment, which performs de-equalization and verification of the presence of all pass filters. Auto input switch, to be able to switch automatically from an auxiliary source to the master input and vice versa. In our setup, I'm using the high level input, so I leave the check on high level. Below, I can choose the auxiliary sources present. In our case, I have two auxiliary digital sources, so I select optical one and optical two. The input configuration of the OEM system is shown in the diagram consisting of front, rear, center channel, and subwoofer. The check in the lower right allows you to disable the turn on commanded by the high level input. We could also control the turn on with the remote. At the bottom right is the selection for the left or right hand drive. The choice modifies the display of the diagram to facilitate the installer in setting the time delays according to the listening position. In this important phase, the wizard automatically adjusts the sensitivity of the processor's high-level input to obtain an optimal signal-to-noise ratio from the OEM source. I insert the USB drive where the test tracks are recorded, or the CD. I select track 1. I adjust the source to the maximum undistorted volume and go on. The level calibration will take a few minutes. The Bit1 HD automatically adjusts the input level according to the connected high-level channels of the source. In this phase, the presence of time delays in the input and the electrical polarity of the cables connected to the processor are checked. I play track number 3 and press Next. The software in this case did not show any time delay on entry, otherwise the check in the top right would have been active. However, it has identified a polarity inversion in the input cables of channel number 2. With the check in the lower left corner, I can choose whether to automatically compensate for the polarity or correct it by intervening manually. In this last case, it is sufficient to intervene on the red X to invert the polarity. Next, I choose to start the de-equalization procedure, or I could also bypass it. The software tells us to play track 2 and to choose whether or not to perform the in-phase analysis of the input signal to check if all pass type filters are present in the OEM source signal. In our case, we activate the check and proceed. The procedure takes a few minutes. At the end of the analysis, the software indicates the presence of incoming all-pass filters and asks us if we want to activate the automatic compensation of these. We start the procedure that takes a few seconds. At the end of the system shows us the dashboard that shows all the fronts of the system and any existing equalizations. Let's analyze the front left. This has a trend with the high pass filter positioned at around 90 Hz and an equalization highlighted by the curve in blue. The de-equalization curve is the one highlighted with the yellow curve. The window also shows that there are no time delays. We also highlight the performance of the other fronts and the subwoofer. Using the selector at the top center, we can switch to the suggested all-pass view. In our case, the software highlights that there are two all-pass filters positioned at 500 Hz and 7 kHz in the right rear front. In this phase of the wizard, the compensations that the software will operate in the input signal are not yet visible. These will be highlighted later. With the next step, I can choose to configure the auto input switch of the auxiliary source, as in our case. 
Connect the RVA connector of the Bit1 HD Virtuoso to the auxiliary input of the OEM source or connect the USB memory with the 16.5 kHz RVA tone to the USB reader of the head unit and activate the relative input, in both cases without changing the volume of calibration. The procedure will take a few seconds. In this step, I select the speakers in my system. I decide to create a multi-amplified system. I can choose between a four-way, three-way, or two-way multi-amplification system. In my case, I select a three-way front system, two-way rear, stereo subwoofer, and two-way center channel. The software detects that I have exceeded the maximum number of 13 available output channels using 14 channels for my configuration. Then I go to select the crossover tick on the center channel to make it passive and delete an active channel on exit, returning to the maximum number of channels. The software highlights that this configuration is not compatible with the Audison BitTune automatic calibration system. In the next step, we perform the routing of the output channels or the assignment of the RCA port number to the amplifiers for each channel. We can choose to keep the default assignment or customize it. Any inconsistencies are signaled by the software that blocks the storage. The last step is the configuration of any amplifiers equipped with the AC Link and AD Link inputs, such as Thesis and Voce amplifiers with AV bit in. I can choose to configure those later. Pressing OK ends the automatic routing procedure. Now all we have to do is continue with the tuning of each single output, activities that we will examine in the following tutorials. Thank you.